As Dr. Adler mentioned in his presentation, he used a naive Bayes algorithm in order to classify messages from an online gift basket company as either coming from a business or a consumer. The naive Bayes algorithm is a probabilistic technique that uses a strong independence assumption in order to classify data. Let's look at that technique now. We first start with input. And so what's going to go into our algorithm is a document D. Now, in our case, that document is going to be text that comes from a particular message. We're also going to have a set of classes. We'll call those C, where it could be any of N such classes. And in our case, we only have two. C1 could either be a business or C2 could be a consumer. Lastly, our input is a training set of M documents. So this training set consists of data that we've already pre-classified where we know the correct document and the correct class that it belongs to. Our output is a trained classifier, which we'll call gamma. And gamma is going to take a document, look at it, and then give us its suggested class, C sub K. So our classifier gamma is going to work like this. We're going to take the text from a particular message, and we're going to want to classify that message. So only certain words in that message are really going to be important. Those are going to be the words that appeared in our training set of data. So we're going to take the words that are most important, and we're going to eliminate the others. So these words that are most important become our bag of words, and that's what our classifier is going to use in order to make a decision. So we're going to be interested in the following. What is the probability of a class given a document? Right? So in other words, what's the probability that my message actually came up from a consumer given a particular set of words? Well, by Bayes' rule, we can solve for this probability as the probability of the document given the class times the probability of the class all divided by the probability of the document. So this is the information that we're really wanting to find out. And actually, we want to know what is the class that maximizes this probability. And that's going to be our Bayes classifier. So we want the maximum value of C in our set of classes of this probability. We refer to that as C map, where map just refers to maximum a posteriori. The maximum a posteriori is the value of our class that maximizes the probability. So it's the maximum over all of our classes C of the probability of our class given the document. Now we just showed before that by Bayes' rule, we can maximize over the conditional probability of the document given the class times the probability of the class, and this is all over the probability of the document. But we don't necessarily know the probability of the document because we have to consider it relative to which class it comes from. So we can use the law of total probability to write this as the maximum over all classes of the probability of the document given the class times the probability of the class over the sum over all classes, say, G of P of the document given G times P of G. So again, here in the denominator, we see the law of total probability. In our case, the classes that we're summing over are just consumer and business. Let's look at the probability of our document given the class. Now recall that our document is made up of text that comes from either a business message or a consumer message. So we can think of this as the probability of x1 out to xn conditional on the class. 
where x1 might refer to the word happy, x2 might be birthday, and maybe xn refers to the word mom. We want to understand what is the probability of seeing this grouping of words together, given that it came from a business message or given that it came from a consumer. And we can simplify this joint probability as the probability of x1 given c times the probability of x2 given c to the probability of xn given c. Now in this simplification, we've assumed that each of these words are conditionally independent. Now this is a naive assumption, hence the name for the naive Bayes algorithm, because it assumes that the probability of seeing each of these words are independent from each other. So for example, the probability that you see happy given that you see birthday is independent. Now in real life, this isn't the case. In fact, if you see the word birthday, you're more likely to see happy in a message. But by implementing the naive assumption, we're actually able to greatly simplify our computation and still get solid results. So we can now write this as the product over all xj of the probability of xj given the class. Let's plug this back into our formula. So recall that we saw for CMAP, our maximum a posteriori value. And this is the value of the class that maximizes our probability. We just showed that our probability, P of D given the class, can be written as the product over all XJ of the probability of XJ given C. Likewise, we see that term appear again in the denominator. Let's suppose we got a message that says, thanks for being a part of our team. And we want to use our naive Bayes algorithm to classify that message. Well, only certain words are going to be used to classify, because remember, we had a training set of M samples that we use for our algorithm. And so we're going to pull out the words that are most important in helping us classify our message. In this case, it might be thanks, part, and team. As you can see on the table, we have the probability of seeing that word, given that it's a consumer message, and the probability of seeing the word, given that it comes from a business. So we can use these probabilities in order to calculate the chance that this is a business message or a consumer message. Let's actually do that now. The probability of a business message is 0.3 or 30%, which we can denote as P of B. The probability of a consumer message is 0.7, which we'll denote as P of S. Now, using our formula for CMAP, we can plug in the probabilities from our table to get the following. We have the probability of thanks, given that it's from a business, probability of part, and the probability of team, also given from being from a business, times P of B in our numerator. And then we're dividing by the sum of those relative to being a business or coming from a consumer. When we calculate this probability, we get 0 0.9058, which tells us there's over a 90% chance that this is a business message. Here we see the results from several gift basket orders, where score is telling us the probability that the message comes from a business order. Notice that the first message, quote, thank you for all your hard work, it is truly appreciated by the management team, has an extremely high probability of being a business message, along with a few others. We can likewise see those messages that have a small chance of being a business order, such as, Dear Jillian, hope you're feeling better soon. Love, Anne and David. And certain messages, such as, Enjoy, Jeremy, don't provide enough information to classify one way or another. Here we see the distribution of probabilities of the orders from our naive Bayes classifier. Notice that the distribution is heavily clustered in the tails, telling us that the classifier does a good job of distinguishing the messages. Now, if we wanted to add sophistication to our model, we could build on what we have by using messages that were highly classified, say greater than 98% or less than 2%, and adding those to our training data in order to beef up our model. This might help us eliminate 
many of those messages that were classified between, say, 30 and 70 percent. Now, there's some methods for which the Bayes algorithm is not going to be a good choice. So, for example, maybe you wanted to know if a robbery was about to be committed, and you get messages, and you want to classify those messages. In that case, you'd want to look for groupings of words, say, bank robbery at midnight, and you'd want to see if that actually occurred in a message. There are other methods that you could use, say, the K-nearest neighbors method, which would work better in that case. With K-nearest neighbors, you pick a word, and then you're going to choose the K words that are closest to it and classify that grouping. Developing your statistical foundation will give you a strong knowledge base that you can use in order to intelligently extract information from data.